Hi everybody, this is Courtney with Fiber Fox Studios and today we're going to be working on this really pretty poncho. It also serves as a really nice warm shawl because its closure is just a button closure and you can have it buttoned and wear it as a poncho or you of course can unbutton it and use it as a shawl. This particular one that's here in front of you, the colors are very blown out on screen because of my LED lights that I light with, but I'm going to kind of bring it closer so maybe you can see the stitch work. This colorway is called Ocean. It will show up a lot better in the pictures that I've taken. So you'll see it's more true color in those beginning pictures at the beginning of the video. But I did want to give you up close on that stitch work because it's not showing so well. It is really, really gorgeous. So it's a very textured stitch and it's super simple to do. So this is one that is going to be great for beginners that are wanting to kind of do something a little bit different and learn a new technique. And then of course it's great for the advanced crocheter because maybe you've never seen this stitch before. While I'm using it for a poncho, you could definitely use this for a blanket. This would be a great baby blanket stitch. And we're going to get into the details of the stitch, but before we do that, I did want to show you another sample in a different color. So this is a green color that I used. Now this is some Big Twist yarn. I will have all of the yarn information down below in the description, but I think the stitches show just a little bit better with this lighter tone so that you can see what we will be doing here. And on the shawl or poncho version, I mean, it's one thing that you're making, but regardless of what you're going to use it as, there is a really pretty, very simple lace border at the end. So it, this is another really great border option. You, of course, can do any border that you want, but I will teach this border option here in this tutorial. We're going to jump into the stitch work next. So grab your yarn and your crochet hook. And I am doing this in size four yarn. For those of you who want to venture out and use different size yarns, look down in the description. I'll have some more information down there that'll help you determine what you're doing with your particular project and the yarn that you're using. But for most of us, we're going to use this really pretty size four worsted weight yarn. And I'll be back in just a moment with the camera lower and we'll get started. Just to go over real briefly, the Caron One Pounder is what I use for the specific blue one that's over here to the side now. I think the color is showing a little bit better in this shot, and you can see that texture. Very, very nice stitch. This particular colorway is Ocean, and this is the Caron One Pounder, so they are very large skeins. This one is 812 yards, 742 meters. I used one full skein of it and then i have the second one just to kind of show you about what i have left i've got pretty sizable amount left and this was for the plus sizes we'll have plenty of yarn left over so you don't have to use the one pounders that's just what i had on hand in the color that i wanted so and i was trying to use up some of them big balls of yarn <laughs> so we're going to begin now by doing our starting chain and I will be working in a 5.5 millimeter hook. You can use whatever hook size you're most comfortable with with a size four yarn. So if you want to use a six millimeter, you're totally fine to do that. And if you're using smaller yarn, you will have to refer to the description. I'll give you information, measurements that will help you determine how many starting chains to do. I've not worked this in size three yarn or size two sport weight. So keep that in mind. You will have to kind of play with that stitch multiple to create this with smaller yarn. We're going to be chaining in a multiple of four and then adding five chains onto the end. So you want to do your multiple. I've got the chain count, starting chain counts down below in the description for those of you who are working with size four worsted weight yarn. So you can refer down to the description for the specific size that you are making. So let's get our starting chain ready and we will come back and do row one. This is a very, very simple stitch, kind of four rows. So we'll get the foundation worked up and then begin the stitch work. So I have a total of 25 chains for the swatch that I'm working up. So I'm just gonna do a swatch with you guys on camera because I've already made the entire project. So to begin row one, 
And this is just a setup row, so this is not part of our repeat. This is just simply setting us up to start working that stitch pattern. We're going to work into the fourth chain from the hook. So we never count the loop that's on our hook. We are going to skip one, two, three, and go here into the fourth, doing a double crochet. So you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook, come down here into that fourth chain, and insert going under the V, Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, grab your yarn, pull through two, and grab your yarn and pull through two. So we're going to do double crochets all the way down this entire row, working one into each and every single stitch. So you are just going to continue working in that same exact manner on down the rest of your row, placing a double crochet in every single stitch, and then we will meet back up when you are ready to turn your work and move on to row number two. I've completed row one, our setup row. And this is the only time you will do a row of double crochets down the entire row. That's why it's not counting as part of our in the rows that we'll need to repeat because this is the only time we're going to do this. So this is the 23 double crochets that I now have after completing the first row. So keep in mind, we started out with 25 starting chains and I end up with 23 double crochets so for you guys doing the larger um, pieces to do the actual project you'll be referring down to the description to check your stitch count to make sure that you end up with the correct number of stitches we're going to begin now working on our first row of our repeat so each and every time after you complete a row you're going to complete a row of single crochets and turn our by turning our work so we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we are now on the wrong side of our project. And what I mean by wrong side of our project is we are always going to be working the actual stitch pattern that creates this look on one side. The reverse side of our work looks like this. So it's still pretty, but you don't see any of these stitches that actually give us the texture to this piece. So we're going to complete a row of single crochets after each and every row. So I chained one, turned my work, and now we're gonna go here into the very first stitch of this row. So we don't skip anything. We make sure we're going into the first stitch and we complete a single crochet. And we're gonna to continue to do that one in each and every stitch all the way down our row. I'm gonna meet back up with you at the end of this row so that we can make sure that you do not miss that chain three that began our work on row one to set up. So we'll be back in just a moment, but you're gonna place a single crochet in each and every stitch all the way down your entire row. I'm back with you now at the end of row two, and I wanted to show you I have this one double crochet right here, but this chain three that we did at the start of the row also counts as a double crochet. So you do not wanna miss this stitch when we're doing our, basically our backside row of the single crochets. So we want to work here into this next very clear double crochet with our single crochet right there on top. And now we want to make sure that we count up one, two, three, and get into the top of this third chain to complete our row. And we will still have a total of 23 stitches if we've done this right. So each row when you're doing it, you're not going to be adding or losing any stitches. So for the first few rows as you're working your project, you do want to count to make sure you maintain the correct count. So whatever your foundation setup row, the total number of stitches you have, down here, you're going to keep that same 
count of stitches on every single row all throughout your project. So now we're going to begin row three, which starts by doing a chain three. So one, two, and three. You can also do a standing double crochet for those of you who are familiar with that technique. That is how I completed my project, but it's up to you. So this chain three counts as our first double crochet for this row. And we are going to place a double crochet in the next two stitches. So we are skipping this one right here. And now we're going to double crochet right here into the very next stitch. So don't work here. Come right here. Complete your normal double crochet. And we need to do that one more time right here into this very next. And now we're going to work into this stitch right here and we're going to begin to do our work that shows our actual stitch pattern that we're creating. So we're going to go right here to this very next double crochet. And this time we are not working into the top of it. We're going to wrap our yarn like we're going to do a double crochet. We're going to come down here and work around our double crochet. So we're going to come right here picking up that stitch. So we're picking up that double crochet and we're going to grab our yarn and pull up our loop nice and tall. So we want to bring the height of that loop up here so that it's even with our row. And then you want to wrap again, coming right back down here and working around that same double crochet again. So we're just working around the one double crochet. I'm going to wrap or grab our yarn, I mean, and pull up our loop again, nice and tall. So if you take a look at your work, we're up here, similar to the height of our stitch. Now we're going to grab our yarn and we're going to pull through all of those loops, leaving just these two left on our hook. Then we're going to grab our yarn again and pull through the last two loops to finish out that stitch. It becomes much more natural as you start doing this. So now the next three stitches, we are going to be placing a double crochet. And to make sure you don't miss a stitch, look down here and make sure that you identify the one that's right beside this one that we just did the cluster around. So we want to find this stitch and go all the way up with it, finding that uh, single crochet right there. If you fold this back, you'll see that there's one stitch back here and that cluster we created covers that one stitch. So right here in this next stitch, we're going to do a double crochet. There's one double crochet. We're going to wrap again. We're going to repeat this two more times into the next two stitches. So there's number two. And number three. And then in the fourth stitch down here, we're going to do our cluster again. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook, slide down here to this part of the double crochet, which is technically two rows below, and we're going to pick it up. So we're picking up just the one stitch. We're going to grab our yarn. Pull up a loop and we're going to pull it up nice and tall. So we're going to make sure that we're going to the height of our stitches up here. We're going to wrap again. You can hold on to everything if you need to. We're going to come down here and work again around that stitch. Pulling up and going tall. So now we're going to turn our work just a little bit towards us so we can look dead on with it. And we're going to grab and pull through those loops that we created there, leaving two. And we're going to grab and pull through two again. So if you take a look, we've now got two of the clusters. So the repeat for this entire row is going to be doing three double crochets, one cluster. So right here, identifying our next stitch. And I like to stretch my work out to do that. So we're going to identify this next stitch. Make sure we are not letting this hide that stitch. So you do want to stretch everything out. Fold this back if you need to. You're going to see one unworked stitch 
back here if you need to check yourself that way. And it's good to do that just the first few rows just to make sure to take the time to make sure from there you'll be very used to doing this and you won't be worried about missing your stitch. So we're just going to find that next one and do three double crochets. So we're starting a repeat. There's one. Number two. And number three. In the fourth stitch, we are going to cluster. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook, identify this next stitch, come down here and pick up just that stitch. That's what it looks like from that angle. Grab and pull up a loop and nice and tall. Grab, go back down around again. So going under that same stitch. Pull up that loop nice and tall. So we're stretching it up. Now we're going to grab, as you can see, there's four loops right there. Grab and go through those four loops, leaving two loops left on our hook. Grab and pull through two. And that completes the stitch. Now we're going to wrap our yarn again. Identify this next stitch. So if we stretch everything out, we can see this is our next one. I'm going to go right there into that and do three double crochets. So we're starting that repeat again. So one. Here's number two. And here is number three. fourth stitch we cluster so we're going to wrap identify this very next stitch we're going to go around that stitch only we're working directly around it you can turn your work to the side if that helps you we're going to grab and pull up our loop stretch it nice and tall grab insert again or wrap I mean insert again and pull up our loop nice and tall now we're going to grab and pull through all four loops leaving two on the hook grab and pull through the last two to complete our stitch that ends the repeat we start it one more time we're going to work three double crochets over the next three stitches one two three now we cluster in the fourth so we're going to go right here this is our next stitch another way to check your count is you have cluster one two three double crochets so you know this one is the fourth so we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook we're going to come down here and go in and behind that stitch picking that up we're going to grab our yarn and pull up our loop and we just pull up nice and tall getting to the height of our work that's up here on this row we're gonna wrap our yarn again we're gonna come back around this stitch again and we're gonna grab our yarn pull up a loop and we just stretch it pull it nice and tall and then we're going to grab our yarn one last time and go through those four loops leaving these two on the hook Grab and pull through two to finish out the stitch. And now we're here at the end of the row. So we're going to do the end of the row together. So if you're not at the end of your row, and most of you won't be, you're going to pause here and meet back up with me when you're ready to see this. But it's very simple. We're going to be doing three double crochets over the next three stitches to end the row. And if you take a look at the beginning of your row, that chain three counts as a double crochet. So you have three double crochets down here. Our row will end with three double crochets. So we just make sure that we identify each of those stitches and we complete a double crochet in each and every one. So there's one. Two and three.
Now we're going to be doing, it's almost like a return row. We're going to be doing a single crochet row next by turning our work. So we're going to chain one. And this is a repeat row. So every time you end a row, you're going to chain one. A row with our clusters, you're going to chain one and you're going to be working on the back side of your work. So when we're facing and looking at the back side of our work, we know automatically that that's going to be a single crochet row. So you're going to be doing a single crochet in each and every single stitch all the way down the entire row, making sure to work into the chain three and the top of it, one, two, three, here at the end of the row. So we're going to go through this row real quick together. I won't do the whole thing. We have a chain one on our hook. And now we're going to begin by working here into the same first stitch. So we're not skipping anything. And we're just going to complete a single crochet. And we're going to continue to do that one in each and every stitch all the way down this row. So this is our back side row. No clusters on this side. We're just going to work single crochet. And all of those stitches will meet back up to make sure we do not miss the end of this row. And then we'll be on to the last row that we need for our repeat. So really two of the rows for the repeat are exactly the same because we have a single crochet row, then we have a cluster row, single crochet row, and then our next cluster row is going to help us offset our cluster. So it's it's really two rows that really matter. When you're looking at the back side of your work, it's the easiest way to remember single crochets when you see the back side. So we'll be back in just a moment. So we are here at the end of row four and we now have just this chain three left to work into. So we're gonna make sure that we identify the top of the chain three, and that's where we're going to insert and make sure we do a single crochet. You do not wanna miss that, it'll completely throw off your count. So now we're gonna begin row five, which is gonna be the last row of our repeat. So we're gonna chain up three. So your rows always begin when you're doing the um, cluster row, they always begin with a chain three. When you're doing your single crochet row, it's a chain one. So we're going to turn. We have done our first double crochet because this chain three counts as a double crochet. And now let's take a look at our work down here. So our chain three is counting as our first double crochet, so it's taking up that stitch. We are now going to begin doing our cluster right here in this very next stitch. This is the only thing that changes is the position that we begin clustering in changes on the second time around of doing our cluster row. So we are going to wrap our yarn around our hook and we're going to go right here, slide down and work around this double crochet. So we're going to grab and pull up our loop nice and tall and stretch it up. Looks like that going to wrap again. We're going to go back down here into the same stitch and work around it again, pulling up and going up nice and tall. So when we look at that straight on, head on, it's what we look like. We're going to grab and pull through the first four loops, leaving two loops on our hook. Grab and pull through two. And we've just completed our cluster. Now our repeat for the row begins again, and it's exactly like the previous cluster row. We're going to do three double crochets in the next three stitches, and then the fourth double crochet will be a cluster. So we're going to do that together. Identify the very next stitch. Working into the top there, into the single crochet, we're going to do a double crochet. There's number one. We do a total of three. Number two, and last but not least, number three. Now for the fourth stitch, we're going to cluster. So now for the cluster, if you take a look at your work at this previous row, we're going to be working right here, which means we're going to be in the center from the previous rows clusters. So we're gonna wrap our yarn. It's gonna come down here to the double crochet. Pick that up.
So now we are going to do the three double crochet, starting that repeat again, making sure we're working right here. So you stretch everything apart, you can see that stitch. And that is all that there is to it. So this row is really just like our previous clustering row. The only difference is we started our cluster sooner so that we could set up so that we're our next set of clusters falls in between the previous set. So that's the only thing that changes for this row. So that's your repeat essentially is row two through row five until you reach the desired size. And there's measurements that this panel needs to be because it's a rectangular poncho or shawl. So it's just a rectangular shape that's folded in half to create the poncho, which I'll go over the uh, folding it and the adding the border, that sort of thing here at the end of the video. But that's really all we're doing. So it's super simple to do this. And hopefully even with this lighting being so bright, you can see that our cluster has fallen right in between the other clusters. So you're going to keep working the same manner, create the panel that you need to create the poncho. If you're going to wear it as a shawl, then all you're going to be doing is adding on the border row and you'll be done. The rest of us are going to add some buttons and everything. So we'll be moving on to that next, but, um, or we're actually going to do the border before we do buttons, but you'll be pausing here and coming back to the video when you're ready to finish up. So you're going to finish out creating all of the panel that you need for your size. So we're here at the fourth row of our repeat, basically it's row five. <laughs> and I just wanted to show you guys over here when we started this row, uh, we started working in the second double crochet doing the cluster. So when you get down here to the end of your row, that is exactly how it's gonna end up lining up if you've done everything correctly and haven't skipped any stitches. You'll have your three double crochets you will cluster in the next and then you will only have one stitch left to work into and that of course gets a double crochet. So if you take a look at the front of your row, the beginning of the row, and the end of the row, they're going to work out to look identical as long as you maintained and didn't miss any stitches. So we have double crochet cluster here at the beginning of the row. The chain three counts as our double crochet and a cluster. So hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. So you're going to complete the rest of the rows you need in order to finish up your size. And that's all down in the description along with the row start times for the rows that you're going to need to repeat. If you need to see that again, you're essentially going to be repeating rows two through five as many times as you need until you reach the desired size. Then your final finishing row will just be a row of single crochet. So you'll work your single crochet row as your very last row for the size of your rectangle. We're working the, we've worked the total length of our starting chain for how long our piece is going to be. And now we're going to work for our total width of the actual panel. So we've completed our single crochet row to finish up and we're now we're currently looking at the back side or the wrong side of our work. So we're going to chain four to move up to the first row of our border. So you're just simply going to chain four and turn your work. At this point, all we need to do is do a V stitch. So we're going to skip over three stitches. So we're going to not count this one right here. One, two, three. And into the fourth, we're going to do a V stitch. So that's made up of a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all into the same exact space. So this begins the repeat for this row essentially. So you have first double crochet, chain one, and now we double crochet right here back into that same exact space. And that creates our V stitch. Now we chain three, one, two, three. We are going to skip four stitches, one, two, three, four, and go into the fifth doing a V stitch. So the entire repeat for this row is V stitch, chain three, and you'll be skipping over four, working into the fifth on this entire row. So you can pause here and meet back up with me when you're ready to finish up the end of this row, show you guys how that is done. It's very, very simple. Chain three, one, two, three, and that ends the repeat. Start again, skip four, one, two, three, four, into the fifth, 
with a V-stitch. Super, super simple. V-stitch is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet right back in to that same exact space. Chain three. One, two, and three. So we'll be back in just a moment and we'll finish up the end of the row together. So now that I'm approaching the end of my row, I'm just going to finish that up on screen with you guys. One, two, three, four. So I'm skipping four. I've got the chain three already done. Coming here into the fifth to do my V-stitch. Double crochet. Chain one. Double crochet. And now since I'm here at the end of the row with only a few stitches left, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to do a double crochet in the very last stitch of the row. That's going to finish up. That's how we're going to end this row. Then from here, we're going to begin working in the spaces and in the V-stitch and everything. And from here, it'll be really simple to keep up with. So we're going to start row two of our border now. So we begin row two by doing a chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to turn our work so we can keep working right along. You'll be looking at the back side at this point. Now we're going to V-stitch into the V-stitch. So you're going to come right here into that V-stitch, skipping over this right here, skipping over this double crochet, going right here into the center, working around the chain one space, and you're going to do a V-stitch. So double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all right here into that same v-stitch right there into the center now we're going to chain two one and two we're going to come down here to the chain three that we have this chain three space we're going to work a single crochet right there around it nothing too fancy now we're going to chain two one and two and work a v-stitch into the v-stitch from the previous row wrap our yarn Go there into that chain one space in the V-stitch and complete a double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Extremely simple. This is such a simple but pretty border to do. So we're now going to chain two. This is our repeat for the entire row. Chain two, single crochet, working on the chain three space, which is working directly around that chain three. with a single crochet, chain two, and V-stitch into the V-stitch. So you can keep working in that exact same manner all the way down your row. We will meet back up. I'll show you how to do the row end in just a moment. So we're here at the end of the row. I've just completed a V-stitch in the last V-stitch of the row. All of your row ends for this row will end exactly the same way. We're going to chain one now. So a chain one. And we're going to identify the third chain on this chain four. So we're going to work up from the bottom. We're going to count one, two, three. And into that third chain, we're just going to simply do a double crochet. So that chain four at the beginning of the row counts as a double crochet chain one. We're going to do something very similar down here at the end. So now to move up for row number one again. So I'm doing it so you can see how you start row one of the border here in this work. So we're going to chain up three. One, two, and three. Turn our work. We're going to V-stitch into the V-stitch. So right here. Working into that V-stitch. We're going to do a V-stitch. So that's double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And now we simply chain three, one, two, and three. And you will work a V-stitch into the V-stitch over here. So you're going to skip all of this right here. You're going to skip this entire section. And come right here to the V-stitch 
and do a V-stitch in it. So each of your V-stitches on this row are separated by a chain three, just like we started with down on row one. We're just placing them now into the existing V-stitch from the previous row. So super, super simple and easy to do. You can pause here. We'll meet back up. I'll show you the row end one more time. And then from there, you'll be able to keep repeating this pattern until you've reached the desired size for the border on your poncho or shawl, depending on, or poncho shawl, depending on what you're doing with it. <laughs> so we are here at the end of our second repeat of row one of our border pattern. I've just done my V-stitch into the V-stitch from the previous row. There's no others left. I'm now going to do a double crochet into the top of the chain three. So one, two, three. This is actually a chain four. That's why it's important that we identify the third chain. So we count up from the bottom. One, two, three. And we do a double crochet right there into the third chain. And that completes this row. So from here, we're just going to do row two again and keep repeating rows one and two until we are finished with our design. I like to end on a row one. That's just me personally because it gives a nice flat edge to the bottom of the poncho, but it's up to you. I personally would end or recommend ending on row one of the repeat on the design for the border. We're going to chain up four to start row two again. So there's number three. And here's four. And now we simply just V-stitch into the existing V-stitch. Chain two, one and two. Single crochet on the chain three. So working directly around it. One and two, so you chain two again after your single crochet and V-stitch into the existing V-stitch from the previous row. Double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. All into that chain one space. And you're gonna keep working that exact same manner. You now have seen both of your border rows twice. It's only a two row repeat, so it's super, super simple. And this is kind of like to give you an idea, if you end on the row two of your border, you're gonna have kind of like a, a dipping wave design at the end, which is totally fine. It's completely up to you, but I did end on row one of the border. So you'll keep working until you've reached about five, five and a half inches um, for your actual border section. Down in the description, you'll see the total number of rows that I did on my border on my poncho if you want to match exactly with me. And then from here, all we need to do is add on some buttons to the top edge of our poncho to finish up, and then we will be completely done. A few ends to sew in, one or two maybe. You had to do a join on your yarn, and that's it, and the project is done. So we'll be back in just a second, and I'll show you how to measure out the neck opening and add your buttons. And I did forget to remind you at the end of row two of your border, you've done your V-stitch and then you'll just double crochet into the top of the chain three from the previous row to end out. That'll be your very last stitch in the row. So you'll keep doing that same thing over and over. So here we're going to be adding buttons to the poncho. And if you're going to be doing this just as the shawl, you do not need this step, so you can completely skip the end of this video. But if you want to be able to use it as a shawl and as a poncho, then you will need to follow the directions that I'm about to give. We're going to fold it from right side to left side or left side to right side, whichever way you're working, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Um, you're gonna wanna fold it in half. So we're going to have a very long panel, and then we simply take the left side and fold it over to the right side in my case. And that creates a little bit smaller of a, a rectangle, but still a large rectangle for what we're doing. So we are going to be measuring out at this point using some stitch markers to try it on. We're gonna measure out a neck opening 
what I like to call the head hole. <laughs> We're going to measure that out, and mine is 13 inches. So you're going to be measuring from what is the left side for me over to about 13 inches, and that's where you're going to place your first stitch marker. So the stitch marker is there so that I can try it on. Because this is a rectangular poncho, in this case, I'm going to be wearing it as a poncho. I am going to need to have some room to fold down this outer corner over here. So this edge is going to be setting up on the side of my neck, top of my shoulder, and I'm going to have to fold that down because it will bunch up if we don't fold it down. That's why we're leaving such a large opening. Obviously, on the smaller sizes, you're gonna play with the opening size, do what you like best, but you wanna add your stitch markers here along the top edge. So this is what's gonna be laying at your shoulder and down the side of your arm. You wanna add those stitch markers there and then give it a try on and see if you like it. We are not gonna be seaming or putting buttons all the way down the side. So for me, it was about 14 and a half inches that I decided was going to be my joining area. Uh, I guess about 14 inches. So it was 14 inches for my plus size. And that was the one that I did with the total starting chains of 217. So this is a very large size. So this goes into those plus sizes. For you smaller um, sizes, if you're making a smaller one, you're going to obviously have less uh, length on this total rectangle. So you'll just determine, you'll probably end up about 10 inches is where you're going to want to join to. So that's where the four to five buttons comes into play. It depends on what you're doing, um, which size you're doing, how many buttons you'll need. But you're going to need a max of five buttons. When we do this join, I place stitch markers along here for a total of 14 inches. So I came in 10 and I placed, or I came in 13 and a half to 13 inches, placed my first stitch marker, and then I did another 14 inches worth of stitch markers. That leaves us with this portion down here, which is where our hand and arm is going to come out on the bottom side of our poncho. So you're going to be leaving all of this unseamed, untouched. If you do not want to use this also as a shawl or wrap, you do not need to add the buttons in a functioning way. You can simply seam the amount that you need to seam leaving, in my case, let's see, about 11 inches is left here on the side open. So on my bottom side, when I have this on, my arm's gonna come out in this area. So you'll just do your adjustments, try it on, move your stitch markers if you need to, and make sure that you like your fit before you move forward with anything. So in my case, I am going to use this as both a poncho and a shawl, a wrap. So I'm gonna place buttons along here every so many inches, and I'm gonna be doing that on the back side. So for me, the way that I'm looking at this is this is the front side of my work, and I'm going to place my buttons on the back side. That way, when I actually button it, this is going to come over. So for me, I'm going to need to flip mine around. And when you try it on, you can determine which way you want it to fall, whether you want your right hand coming out at the little slit that we're leaving or whether you want your left hand coming out. It's completely up to you. And we're going to begin. I'm going to place my first button right here at the, or I'm sorry, right here at the first stitch marker. So that's the only one that's, you know, when you put this on, you measure it out, you want to make sure your first one is at the first stitch marker. That's key. From there, you can decide on the spacing. If you have more matching buttons than what I have, then you obviously can place your buttons as far apart or as close together as you want. It is really very flexible. And for me, I want to space mine out to kind of take up even space down to my last stitch marker. And where you have it marked first and last is what we want to stay within. So for me, it looks like my buttons are going to be about four inches on center. 
So by on center, I'm at the center of the button is where I'm counting. because That's where we're going to join it to the next center of the button. And that's four inches. So I'm going to make sure that I keep four inches of space in between all of my buttons. So I'll adjust them as I need to, to maintain that spacing. If I find that I need another button, so five buttons for the plus size is, is what I think it's going to end up being for most of you. Then you can just grab one more button and add that on. And if you don't have an extra one, you can just do wider spacing. So now just to join on or to add on our buttons, all we are going to need to do is simply grab the same type of yarn that we've been using in a yarn needle. And we won't need a whole lot. There's not going to be a lot that we need to do to attach the buttons, but we'll do one of those real quick together. So now we're going to begin joining on our buttons and all I'm going to do is take about, about five, six inches worth of yarn and put it through one of the blunt end yarn darning needles or yarn needles. And for me, because the buttonholes are not that big, I did have to drop down on the size of that. So make sure you're checking out your buttonholes and comparing it to the yarn needles that you have. Now we're going to add on our buttons. So what I've done is I've got my stitch markers still in place. So those are right there. Keeping those right in place so that I don't lose track of where I'm at. I want to add the button basically down here in the single crochet row. And that's just so I have a lot to work with and make sure that I'm getting a nice secure hold on that button. So I've just slid this button down. There's probably about a half inch right here um, from the top edge to where the button top edge meets and we're going to go in through the back side and I'm looking for that single crochet row sorry let me get in the camera so I'm looking for the single crochet I'm just going to come up through there and coming through that button and I don't want to pull my yarn all the way through because I have this tail back here that I'm going to need to secure with and then I just go right here into the other side of the button and coming back here, looking at the back side of my work, I'm just going to make sure I'm going into part of that single crochet that is back there. So I'm just coming in through the back side. A little hard to see. I probably should have switched yarn. And from there, if I want to go through again, I can. But if you really want to make sure it's super secure, you can always go right back in basically where you just came out of. Go in again into your button, pull on through, and go through at least one more time if you're concerned about that join. So from there, all I need to do is tie, I like to tie knots, so I'm going to tie a little knot back here. I'm going to do a double knot, or square knot, I should say. Tie that nice and tight. Because our crochet is going to stretch, so we're going to be able to get into the double crochet on the other side to close this off. So you're going to keep doing your buttons on down, making sure you maintain your spacing. So keep your uh, tape measure handy and finish adding the buttons and then you will be finished. You'll have a couple of tails to sew in and you will be all done. I'm going to have a cowl that will come out in a few days or next week I should say, at the very latest. And that cowl will be a lacy cowl done in this border stitch. It'll be an entire cowl that you can also pair with this when you're wearing it as the poncho and you'll have a cowl neck up at the top which will help kind of take up some of this extra space that we have in, and it will kind of hide this fold that we're gonna have here. And also be a lot warmer for those of you who are in really cold climates. Just a quick little note on when you are buttoning this after it's finished. I have gone down three rows. So I'm counting the double crochet rows. So here's one, two, and three. So going down three rows lining up with the button. And that's where I'm pushing it through. So that I don't get a lot of gapping here at the top. So I went down three rows. So I've got a good inch, inch and a half of fabric on the front side of my panel. And when this is on, it folds, you know, over perfectly back here. It's kind of folded in. 
So it will line up. If you don't want to go down that far or you're still having an issue with any gapping because of the weight of the yarn that you used, especially if you went with like a bulky yarn for this project, then you're just going to add in additional buttons. So you will need to have, instead of, you know, five buttons, you'll probably need to have six, seven buttons. So you can kind of play with that if you need to. But I did find with mine, because I was only had four of these buttons and didn't want to go out and buy more, that four buttons spaced about five and a half inches apart and coming down to that third row was ideal for me. So you will not have a gap along your shoulder and arm. So that is it for now. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you are liking these tutorials, please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I will have a follow-up tutorial to this or a add-on tutorial to this doing the lacy cowl in this stitch pattern. And that will be up on the channel within the next week, if not sooner. And you can do that as an addition to this particular poncho or just do this just because you want to. Completely different color. It's completely up to you, but it's a way if you're using the Karen One Pounders to use up more of that second ball that you will have left. So until next time, bye for now.